Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So of course, this is the part two on 23 Dragons. So I'll be talking about the lessons we learned from the first game. I'll be continuing on that. So of course, um, I was still developing my pieces here, right? You could tell that 23 Dragons had some opportunities. So I guess knight bc4 was very interesting. And after bishop c1, um, 23 dragons had some good opportunities. Queen c7 was a good one. Rook c8 coming along. Um, maybe even rook b6. Maybe even something like... Mm, yeah, I don't know, because I'm threatening d5, so... I guess it has to be queen c7. And after knight takes d5, let me bring in the old knight a3. Double check. And after king d2, let me just bring in the other rook for a pin. King e1, rook takes d5. Rook takes d5. Queen takes c1. And then there's knight c2. And then it's all shababbles. And that should be, that's all she wrote. So, of course, it's completely complicated. Um, but there were definitely winning chances for our good old friend 23 Dragons. But instead, Queen D7 was the fatal mistake. I did get an edge after this. And I didn't let go. The Hail Mary didn't disturb me. So that was the first game. So let's move on to the second game. So in this game, I was black, and after d4, e6, c4, I went back to the old queen's gambit. And guess what? I went back into the triangle defense, as I described earlier. And in this sort of structure, the goal of black is actually to take the pawn and hold it. So after a3, let me hold that pawn. e4, let me hold that pawn again. e5, let me just bring my bishop out. Because in case of a4, I'm going to play something like a6. Hold that pawn. Takes, takes. Going to bring the knight out. Going to bring the knight here. Hold that pawn. So that's the goal. Bishop b7, bishop e3. I play knight e7. I want to bring my knight here. I want to bring the other knight here. That's the ideal goal. Use those squares. Really put my dominance on those squares. After knight g2, play knight f5. And here, 23 dragons make somewhat of an error in um, extremely weakening some squares. And I would say this was the ultimate mistake that led to the start of the problems. So after knight h4, you notice I'm threatening checkmate. Yeah, checkmate very early, but after knight g3, I start to think, is it worth pushing c5 just yet? Right? Because after c5, I have to wonder what happens after knight ce4. Right? But then... There's c takes d4, and after bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, queen takes d4, knight f3. Look at that fork. And I guess that's something I somehow missed during the game, was the c takes d4, queen takes d4 with the fork. I'll remember that next time. That's a mistake for me. So after bishop e7, here's the reason I played bishop e7. Because I calculated that after c5, knight g4, I would have to play bishop takes e4, knight takes e4, and the move queen d5. Or maybe it was different, but I calculated a line where after c takes d4, bishop g5, bishop e7, and I sort of thought, what about knight d6? Right? And it's sort of like jumbled up. I'm not sure what to do. So I decided 
that based on this variation, bishop g5, I missed the move queen a5 check. So I was calculating bishop e7. Once again, I was calculating something like ooh, knight d6 or bishop takes, bishop takes, right? And then knight d6, also a good move for white. So I wanted to avoid these calculations, but I did forget about queen a5 check. So let's get back into the game. I played bishop e7 as what you call a prophylactic move to prevent against my opponent's threat of bishop g5. Rook g1, I played c5, opening up the diagonal to f3, and after d5, I took that diagonal, bam, 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 bishop g2, I took that, I said, you know what, don't kick on my diagonal, rook takes g2, d4, bishop d2, knight out, knight f5, very interesting because as we talked about in one of my previous videos, the best form of defense is always a counterattack. And in this case, it might look like the most flashiest move, but this pawn is very important. So in this case, it's more important to play f4 and defend the pawn. Knight f5, g6, knight d6, takes, takes, king d7, castles, and I invest all my resources onto this open file. And that is the game. So in the main line here, there are a few main lines. e4, d takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop b4. Some people play bishop d2. It's a very complicated line. Don't worry, you won't have to see much of it. Bishop e2 could work. Knight e2 could work. So after bishop e2, Queen takes g2, bishop f3, queen g6, queen d6, looking to threaten this move. Black plays knight d7, white castles, and it's approximately equal. Not sure why, kind of forgot, e5, queen c7, and there's plenty of pressure to the king. I'm not sure how this is, I'm not sure whether this position is good or bad for white or black, but black has more material, but white has the positional development. So for example, knight here, knight here, bishop here, rook here, it's so easy for white to develop. But for black, we have to be careful. Knight e7, bishop takes. So. Let me bring you to a less chaotic version. Knight c3, c5. Knight f3, knight c6. Bishop f, bishop e3, knight c6, knight f6. Bishop e2, castles, castles, and something like take c3, b takes c3, Queen e7 with rook d8, b6, bishop b7. This is a line. But okay, after a3, which I uh, don't think is a move in the position, but it is now. But I got basically the squares I needed, especially with this move g4, gave away this important square. And course I did miss c5 and the idea of queen a5 in my calculations so I'll keep in mind that and really I think the idea of missing the idea of playing g4 was just a little bit too rushed and other than that I think 
it's good to experiment with these things, but when you learn your lesson once, you don't want to do it again. So thank you for listening, and I really hope you enjoyed, you learned, and you got some thoughtful discussion from this video. Let me know, like, comment, and subscribe.